and welcome to the Nest and Soccer Show. I'm Mark, you're Marcus, and this is the show where we love talking about B rosters for national teams. Uh, just finished up talking about Confederations Cup where a very good B roster Germany squad won, and now we're talking about the Gold Cup where USA is putting forth a lot of good players, some guys that are going to be competing, trying to make the World Cup roster. It starts here at the Gold Cup. So the big names, not really there, although we might see them a little later in the tournament. But, uh, you know, the Tim Howards and the Clint Dempsey and uh, Christian Pulisic, they're not there. But uh, so a lot of people, when the Gold Cup comes around, they always they don't really know what it means, what, what's the importance of it, because the Gold Cup itself kind of changes in meaning from year to year. Right. Uh, but so what does this Gold Cup mean this year? Well, this Gold Cup uh, gives the United States a chance to finish what uh, Bruce Arena has called a perfect year, uh, and that would be recovering to qualify for the FIFA World Cup and winning the CONCACAF Gold Cup. Uh, these are U.S. soccer's two main goals for 2017. Uh, the World Cup seems to be back on track uh, after a disaster of a start last year, and uh, yeah, the Gold Cup here is uh, really offers the U.S. players a chance to stake their claim for a spot in the World Cup team. Right, and the winner of this tournament right. would then qualify for a sort of playoff match with the winner of the 2019 Gold Cup uh, to compete in the 2021 Confederations Cup. Yes. Uh, if you're still following yeah, us out this there. Is, uh, it's, something, it's a new thing, CONCACAF, right. or change they made back uh, about four years ago to really... Uh, play up the Gold Cup and then use the, uh, you know, use have this one game playoff called the right. CONCACAF Cup. Uh, it drew 100,000 people out in Los Angeles the last time. Right, USA, USA versus Mexico, Mexico. Beat, yeah. Um, how does that, you know, how do you top that? I don't know, but I think if CONCACAF could have uh, USA versus Mexico every four years to get into the Confederations Cup and it's one big money spinning game, uh, yeah. I don't think they would mind that, but this is. Once again, it's the start of the cycle where the 2017 winner will play the 2019 winner sometime in 2020 right. to go to the 2021 Confederations Cup yeah. if they end up having it in 2021. Right. Um, because of the World Cup change, there's been talk that they might scrap the Confederations Cup or they might play it somewhere else. Uh, nobody wants to play in Qatar. In right. And uh, a lot to speculate on there. Yeah. So we're going to just group, go right over oh, it. Yeah, we don't have time. Yeah. <laughs> it's fine. Uh, but so while that is what it means, I guess, for USA soccer, yeah. on an individual basis, these players that are competing, not just for the U.S., but for the, you know, Jamaica and, and uh, Mexico, they're really trying to make a name for themselves to be recognized and to be on their team's rosters when the World Cup rolls around next, yeah. next, uh, next summer. So USA took on Ghana in a friendly ahead of this tournament with the 23-man roster that we'll see versus Panama and, and in their group stage. Uh, I was impressed. I'll, I'll just yeah, jump right tell in. Tell me about it. What happened? With uh, Dom Dwyer, who originally was born in England and uh, actually came over to the States to play college soccer where he, he did community college for two years, then played for the University of South Florida, the Bulls, uh, where he played one season and kind of just dominated. And then he got picked up by Sporting KC uh, and now has had a very successful MLS career and finally was able to play his first match for the United States national team um, after becoming a citizen and going through that whole process. And first match, first goal. It was a good goal. It's a, nice, what a script. Uh, nice yeah. A little volley. A little volley, uh, kind of a broken play that he was in the right spot, right time, which is a great quality to have as a yeah, forward. Yeah, for a striker. Um, and not just the goal, though. I mean, sort of a, being a defensive forward, you know, in the other team's third, uh, when Ghana had the ball, he was putting a lot of pressure on their defenders, forced them to sort of just, you know, kick it long. And then the USA ends up winning that 50 50 ball. So he was like kind of all over the place. <laughs> and I'm sure he was really excited, you know, his first match for the yeah. national team. And it is, of course, like we mentioned, time to compete for a spot. So, you know, it's all on the line for a guy like Dom Dwyer. But he showed that 
he understands that. He knows what it's going to take to make this roster. So I'm excited to hopefully see him take that effort. And, you know, the goal scoring ability, I think, you know, it was very impressive, the goal. But, like, I'm more excited about him bringing that mentality of just, like, you have to go 100% all the time. And if you can get a defensive player on the opposing team to just sort of clear the ball, yeah. kind of out of control and not building from the back as teams, you know, everybody likes to do, like that is a very positive quality and something that, um, you know, it does require a lot of effort as a forward to keep up that, keep that going all game right. long. But a player like that is actually uh, very useful against yeah. some of the some of the bigger teams that like to hog possession and put the U.S. on the back foot if they have. Uh, a guy like Dom Dom Dwyer, you know, pressuring their defenders and you know nipping at their heels at every chance. Uh, it makes the U.S. I guess a better team. That sort of that sort of work rate up front, right? Uh, versus if everybody's just sitting back behind the ball waiting for uh, you know your Germanys or your right. Chileans you can't do to that. pick It'll you pick, apart. Yeah, Eventually, they will. So, uh, and just one more thing that he sort of did. It only happened like a couple times, but he like in pressuring the defenders of Ghana was really aggressive and, and played very physical. Um, and some of the Ghana players, I don't know, maybe like seemed a little upset with him because it was a friendly, yeah. you know, yeah. I mean, Ghana's themselves were on like this sort of, I think they played two matches in the yeah, U.S. US against, Mex against U.S. and Mexico. Yes. Right. And, they, you know, maybe they're sort of just, I don't want to say they're on vacation or anything, but they weren't. They're on vacation. <laughs> Uh, so I don't think they, they kind of took exception, but he didn't back down. And um, I think when you're talking about CONCACAF and maybe some, like World Cup qualifiers when you're going to Mexico and Honduras and Costa Rica, those games get very physical all the time. Certainly. And yeah. having a guy like Dom Dwyer, uh, you know, kind of ready to stand right up to that is, uh, is encouraging. Well, that's good. He's up uh, for the fight. Yeah. So that's who I'm most excited to watch in this Gold Cup. Do you have somebody that you're really focused on that's sort of competing for a job? I do. It's uh, Kellen Acosta. He's yeah. the midfielder, uh, plays for FC Dallas and MLS, and has just broken into the uh, senior national team, not just the pool and the squad, but he's now a regular player. Uh, he, I think he started against, uh, against Mexico in Mexico, uh, been coming off the bench in some World Cup qualifiers. He is... Uh, it's looking like the U.S. holding midfielder or number six of uh, not only the future, but it could be the present. Um, if he impresses at the Gold Cup this year and cements a spot in the midfield, uh, really? either behind Michael Bradley or next to Michael Bradley, okay. he could be starting. I was I thought you were about to say that he was going to replace Michael Bradley. No, 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 no. <laughs> um, but he's a, you know, Michael Bradley's a player that... Uh, you can't just have anybody playing with him. You have to have right. certain characteristics and qualities. Um, but what Acosta has in spades is uh, energy. You know, he's only 21, 22, uh, very, you know, very high level of composure. And uh, he's got an edge to him, like a chip on his shoulder, where he right. knows he's actually uh, really good. He's led uh, FC Dallas has been arguably the best team in MLS the past two seasons. And uh, he's been a key part of that. And Dallas has just this brigade of homegrown players that have come out of their uh, their academy that all, you know, they surround their uh, Toyota Stadium down in uh, down in Texas. And yeah. Acosta is really the, uh, he, he's the main name of that team that, uh, you know, there's really something special going on in Dallas. And he's a, uh, you know, he's the embodiment of it. Yeah. Um, I think other players that I might be interested in are kind of names that we've been hearing about a little bit, like kind of like Paul Areola. I yeah. feel like I just am always seeing his name pop up in sort of matches that I maybe am not completely invested in the result. And then, you know, you look at sort of the box score after the game and the Paul Areola's got a goal and like, yeah. oh, all right. Yeah. So maybe he'll get a little more playing time. Uh, I know Jordan Morris uh, is on the roster and we've got Juan Agadello being a Boston-based uh, Podcast, you know, he's a revolution player, so yeah. we'll be looking at him. And Kellen Rowe as well. Yeah. Um, I'm, I'm actually really excited to see how these two do. And uh, Agadello, he's kind of a known quality, yeah. uh, or known quantity. We know what he can, what qualities he brings, uh, especially to the national team when he's on his game. Uh, Kellen Rowe's a guy that um, I asked him about five years ago. He was a uh, under-17, under-20, under-23 U.S. national team player. And... Uh, 
right after the revolution drafted him, I was speaking to him and, uh, you know, was just kind of talking about his uh, chances of breaking into the senior team and what he'd have to do. And he always seemed very confident about it, that he would, uh, that he would make it. But I don't think anybody thought that it would take five years. Right. And uh, I think Jurgen Klinsmann, he was, he was playing well for the revolution week in, week out for probably the last three or four years and never really got uh, a chance to even break into the pool. So uh, personally, I was excited about it because, yeah. you know, knowing how uh, this is something he's had on his mind for some time. Um, he's been, it's probably his fifth year in MLS now or sixth year, and he's always been kind of at the cusp of... Uh, getting the call. Yeah, getting the call. So, right. Uh, I guess he played 60 minutes in Ghana uh, against Ghana. I didn't see the game, so I can't really, you know, talk about how well he did. But yeah. just the he fact did, okay. that he's there and, uh, you know, he might be a starter on this Gold Cup team. So that should be interesting. All right. So after the group stage of the Gold Cup, every roster can sort of swap out six players from a 40-man roster that was put forth by each team, uh, I guess, a couple weeks ago or maybe even more. Um so for the U.S., on that 40-man roster is all the big names. is Michael yeah. Bradley, Clint Dempsey, Josie Alzador, Christian Pulisic. Um, you know, it's, and again, it's only six players, and you don't have to use all six. Right. So it may, even, it may just be one guy, maybe a few guys. Um, I think we can – I don't expect to see Christian Pulisic. No. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if he's already back in Germany um, getting ready for the Dortmund season. But he's also got nothing to prove to uh, right. Bruce Arena. Right, and, and you don't want to gas him out and, and all that. Right. Um, but who do you think we could see come into the roster uh, after the group stage? And who maybe who do you most want to see come into the roster? Okay, well, I'm thinking that uh, Bruce Arena is really going to go for it, especially you know depending on uh, if the U.S. gets out at the top of their group and maybe they have a weaker uh, opponent in the next uh, in the quarterfinal round. Um, so I would think he's going to call on some of his uh, his horses that are mainstays of the national team, but they're also domestically based players. So, right. <coughs> excuse me, they're in season and uh, they're close by. They're not having to travel from halfway across from the Europe world, yeah. from uh, wherever else, some other far flung places. So I would say Tim Howard in goal. Um, I don't think you'll see anybody like a. Uh, no big names in central defense. I might you you might see Omar Gonzalez leave uh, leave the camp and go back to uh, his team in Mexico, Pachuca, because they'll be uh, you know really deep into their preseason preparations. Yeah. Um, so defensively, I wouldn't expect to see him. Um, as you said, Pulisic. Yeah, not there. Not. Darlington Nagby is a player who uh, would probably come back in. I like uh, that Darlington Nagby isn't. He's like sort of a guy that could be put into the roster for the group stage because he just came in onto the national team too. Yeah. So it's kind of like he's already being valued as like a really high player in yeah. sort of the U.S. As a starter. Yeah. He's in that starting eleven. And so that's just because I mean we haven't seen I think enough games to really know that for sure. But Bruce Arena is practicing with these players all the time. He's in right. communication with them. So for him to put him. Uh, or to leave him off the 23-man roster for the group stage is is almost like a positive sign, um, right. where I think maybe a lot of people wouldn't have been surprised if he was in this Gold Cup roster. Um, yeah, it's a, I get a sense for some players there's a uh, nothing-to-prove element. To right. It. It's good uh, that he has nothing to prove. That's right, I mean. yeah, right, yeah. right. <laughs> because, uh, you know, he's a player of... Uh, he, he's really grown in stature over the last yeah. two, three years. Um, you know, he's always been talented, and we've always had his... Uh, our eyes on him is maybe, you know, once he gets his uh, citizenship or green card, you know, his eligibility that this guy could come in and contribute. I didn't expect to be watching him coming in and contributing as a starter. Right. Um, so that was a bit surprising in the last few months. But, right. Um, and on top of them, you know, I would expect maybe Clint Dempsey. Uh, he's playing very well for Seattle, scoring big goals and good goals as well. Uh, so he's really rounded into form. Um, these are guys that, you know, you might expect to see against a uh, Costa Rica or Honduras or even right. Mexico in the uh, semifinals and finals. Um, and Josie Altador as well. Um, you know, long-time starters, but really it's bringing guys in for two big games. 
Um, I don't even think the quarterfinal would be, Pro, a, yeah, it'll be you know a major game because if the U.S. wins the group, they might be up against a third place finisher from the other group or from one of the other groups. Right. So, um, you know, I'm, I'm thinking that of these six uh, ringers, is you know I've seen them see them described that it's really two big games that they would need to be used right. for. Um, okay, so I you know we've been talking this whole time as if we know that the U.S. is going to advance past the group stage. And I, they are. We really think that. But they do play Panama in their first match. That's definitely the toughest match of the group stage. Right. Um, I think kind of a, a good test uh, to kind of see what, to really get a good look at these players that we've been talking about and how they compete. Um, and the match versus Ghana even was a good test as well. But I think Panama will be something to really look out for. And I think that's... Like from that match until maybe like the semifinal, yeah, <laughs> we're sort of like in this weird stage of like they're playing a competitive match, but, but maybe like, they're up, you know, two nothing after, you know, really really early on, and and the yeah. game kind of changes from what we're, we really want to be looking at from a competitive standpoint. So yeah, and in Group B, I, I I expect a little bit of resistance from Panama. They played USA tough. Uh, you know, in recent World Cup qualifying cycles. Um, yeah. And I think it was a uh, draw down there that uh, the U.S. had to settle for earlier this year. Um, so Panama's grown, you know, over the last 10, 12 years from uh, a team that now we look at Martinique and Nicaragua as minnows in CONCACAF. They're uh, in Group B along with the United States and Panama. But uh, Panama was there at that level maybe 15 years ago. Right. Where, um, it's not a game you would even tune in to watch because you would expect the United States to win 6-0 or 7-0 or something like that. Not so much the case. Well, anymore. yeah, now Panama versus the United States is a close game, you know, right. decided by a goal, maybe two. Uh, if the U.S. is really firing on all cil cylinders, they might yeah. win by two or three goals. But um, it'll be a good test of uh, just kind of organization and preparation. You know, Arena's worked with these guys now for... Uh, it'll be... Maybe a little over a week before, um, you know, maybe nine, ten days before they actually play. So it's a good test to see how some of these new guys have come in and uh, adapted to the methods and picked up yeah. the messages that he's trying to get across. Which right. with Bruce Arena, it's always just keep it simple and go out there and play. You know? right. Yeah, I like that. Yeah, they all yeah. know their jobs <laughs> and uh, and they go out to do it. But you know, it's not a matter of having two or three games to get up to speed. Having Panama up first. It's, uh, it's the real test, and then right. after that, you know, we're looking ahead to the quarterfinals. No disrespect to Martinique and uh, Nicaragua. Well, yeah, and so I think uh, we'll, we'll see the, the Panama match, and then we'll sort of uh, kind of reconvene after the semifinal of how we feel about this, how this Gold Cup roster performed yeah. um, as far as any, developing any strong opinions. But... Another t team we're going to be watching in this uh, tournament is Mexico. Yes. Uh, coming off of Confederations Cup uh, semifinal loss uh, where they performed okay, kind of a week out. I think maybe we were initially a little disappointed in their performance, but at the end of the day, I think it was kind of what was expected. Yeah, I mean, they um, lost to the uh, eventual champion. Right, and that team at the end like looked pretty good by the end of it. So. Yeah. Uh, but Juan Carlos Osorio, I mean, this this roster will be no players from the Confederations Cup. Yeah. Uh, and then com two completely separate rosters and completely domestic for the Gold Cup, right? Uh, domestic except for one who plays in Major League Soccer. Okay. It's Eric Kubo Torres. Yeah. So we were saying that Juan Carlos Osorio uh, really needs this team to perform well um, because Mexico kind of just goes through coaches. Yeah. Um, <laughs> that is a good churn. And if they have some sort of disappointing performance, uh, you know, he might be out of a job before another World Cup. And so what qualifies as a disappointing performance for Mexico in, in this Gold Cup? Anything other than winning it? You think so? Um, even with their B team, uh, you know, I can't even do sit down and do a roster analysis of this team because right. I don't know this Mexico, you know, their second string team or their B right. team. Uh, well enough, but the expectations are still there. Um, the Mexican Federation will be well aware that the United States is not sending their strongest team. This isn't their A team, so 
Mexico right. up, Mexico B against the United States B. Uh, they're still going to want to win that game and you know win the tournament. That's the that's the funny thing about this Gold Cup is that no country is going to say, oh well, our players are a lot stronger than yours or right. Um, you know, so I think anything less than uh, than winning it could put uh, Osorio's under a lot of pressure. Just today, Mexican legend Hugo Sanchez came out and said Osorio should be fired because of the Confederations <laughs> Cup. Uh, the Secretary General of the Federation, uh, in response, kind of gave his backing and said he was going to be good through uh, the qualifiers because Mexico's having an excellent the, qualification campaign. So to come out and even say that, though, is like through the qualifiers and not say through the World Cup, when you're one... The, we are one year one away of, from the World Cup. Yeah. And you would like, even if, you know, you had, I guess, a disappointing Confederations Cup, just have a steady leader of the ship through this World Cup cycle, and then after the World Cup, move on if you feel the need to. But, you know, because as a player, maybe it, it's a negative effect. Like, it, you're just thinking, like, I'm listening to this coach. But I'm hearing all these rumors. Like, yeah. how long is this guy even going to be around? I'm just going to do my own thing. It's a it doesn't help anybody. It's it's very destabilizing. Um, yeah. But that that is the reality that Mexico lives and plays under. Yeah. Is that uh, the coach is always one bad tournament away or one bad loss away from uh, getting fired. It's a very political job in a way that maybe the United States is not because right. it doesn't have uh, the same amount of scrutiny sure. and the same amount of intensity. Uh, Osorio's, um, Mexico's, w w before the United States game where they uh, drew in Mexico in the, at Azteca, uh, Mexico was having a historically good qualification campaign. Yeah. I mean, they were just steamrolling through everything. And uh, all of a sudden, two or three iffy games at the Confederations Cup, and it's like, off with this guy's head. Right. And, uh, yes. That's just the way things work uh, with the Mexican Federation. Well, we'll see how it works out for Mexico. Yeah. Um, but the goal is always the same. It's to reach that uh, World Cup quarterfinal or even semifinal yeah, if you can. Enormous and, expectations. Uh, I think they, well, they know well in Mexico that uh, winning the Gold Cup does not guarantee you reach that far in the uh, yeah. World Cup or, you know, Maybe winning the Confederations Cup would have been that signal that everything was on track. Uh, they didn't win the Confederations Cup. Right. They didn't even finish third. So <laughs> it's the same old hand yeah. ringing that's out. Uh, that's out again. But yeah, anything less than winning this tournament, and uh, you know, the the knives will be back out. Well, um, also in Group C is uh, Jamaica. Yes. And you talked to a New England Revolution player. Javon Watson, I did, yes. uh, who will be playing for the Jamaica side, and uh, you uh, you interviewed him. You got some audio for us. What do you got? Yeah. Um, we're expecting to do better than we did the last time. Mm. We just try to win it. We lost at the final last yeah, year, so right. we try to win it this year. And, um, it's always a good tournament because you know you got a lot of good teams like the U.S. You got Panama, you got Mexico, and every 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 team is good. So it's going to be a good tournament, and um, I'm looking forward for it. Yeah, I think so. You know, we always try to aim for biggest, bigger things. So um, we just have to go there and do the work. And, um, you know, it's not easy because soccer is, it may look easy in the eyes, but it's a lot of hard work. But um, we got a good bunch of guys. We got a team um, there in camp already. So we're just prepping up to play our first game. Um, Major League is good. It's getting better every year. They put a lot of stuff in place. And, um, you know, on the level of the football is way high. Yeah. And the intensity is high. So you have to keep keep fit, you have to rest, you have to eat. So um, I think it prepares us well because you, last year we got like, the last time we went to the final, we got like eight guys starting in the team that played in Major League. Yeah, so yeah. Um, the league is growing because, you know, the coaching here is good and everything is good. So um, we're just looking forward to go there and, um, and play as a unit. That was Javon Watson of the New England Revolution. Uh, and that was after their U.S. Open Cup victory. Um, yeah, round of 16. Round of 16. Uh, DC United. Yeah, putting them into the quarterfinal. Uh, Jamaica is, I feel like, kind of an up and down uh, program, I guess you call them. Yeah. It's better some years than others. I think we'd expect them to advance out of this group and maybe be the sort of semifinal team that the U.S. would come up against and, and everybody would say, oh boy, here's Jamaica. We got to be on our A game and make sure that we take care of business against these guys. Yeah, Jamaica's, um, I mean, they were in the final last go-round. They've been, uh, they're, they're one of those teams that, depending on 
who which Jamaica shows up that summer and what kind of hunger and motivation they have, mm -hmm. uh, they can go far in a tournament like the Gold Cup. Um, you know, I didn't expect them to reach the final last last time in 2015. Uh, I didn't expect them to play Mexico tight for as long as they did. But uh, you know, I think what speaking with uh, with Javon, one of the things that stuck out for me is that there's this flattening going on in, in Concacaf, where you have the United States, you have Mexico, and then all these other countries. They're getting are, closer. Yeah, they're just yeah. getting closer. Where you know, years ago, five, ten years ago, these yeah. teams were nowhere near the level of the US, U.S. and Mexico. Well, now you've got Costa Rica going to the quarterfinal of the World Cup. You've got Honduras uh, making World Cup after World Cup. And if they pop up in the knock, knockout rounds, no big surprise. Some of their players are playing over in Europe. Yeah. Um, Jamaica is another example where they have uh, several of their players playing in MLS. Uh, every now and again, they'll get some that have uh, seasoning over in England. and. You know these teams can put rosters together that can really compete yeah. with uh, some of the big teams, and you know Jamaica's On their day, you know right. Jamaica's in Group C with El Salvador, Curacao, and Mexico. Uh, no reason why Jamaica shouldn't be in the knockout round, and yeah. you know once that happens, they're two wins away from a spot in the final, three wins away from a uh, chance to play in the Confederations Cup. Yeah, I think in the sort of flattening of the Concacaf, as you said. Um, maybe it would concern U.S. fans, but I'm not sure it's such a concerning thing because I think the U.S. is still improving, yeah, uh, and their depth is getting bigger and bigger. But maybe just the top 11 of these countries are getting to the point where they really can't compete, um, kind of with anybody. Yeah. Kind of how the U.S. used to be, where we had really 11 solid professional players, and we could go up against you know the best teams in the world and and put a put a good game together if yeah. we played well now it's sort of like the u.s has more depth and if this guy isn't on his game you know the next game we can swap them out for somebody else that could maybe be performing better yeah and um i think it just makes for things like a more exciting gold cup and, I um, think and more exciting Concacaf world cup qualifying. Yeah, and the so. credit has to go to major league soccer for that is that yeah. there's a there's a platform for players from outside of the united states uh, that aren't necessarily, you know, they're not Mexican and they're not uh, maybe a standout with a uh, Honduran club or a Costa Rican club where players from Panama and Nicaragua and El Salvador and the Caribbean islands and Canada, yeah. uh, they can come here and play in, uh, at a pretty professional level and, you know, very nice facilities. And right. uh, when they line up against players they know well in the Gold Cup, you know, that they've been playing against them on a week to week basis. That fear factor that might have existed uh, a decade ago, I don't think is yeah. there anymore. Right. Yeah. Um, so it's uh, it's really interesting, and uh, you know, it, it was only audio with the uh, interview with Javon Watson, but you know, you could you could hear the confidence, and right. you know, he says uh, he's 30 years old, he's a veteran, and he's going to play at this level, and he's like, yeah, this is where I belong, and he's been at this level for right. 65, 70 games now for Jamaica, so. Um, I think it's a uh, it, it's one of those it's just a product of the development in the region that players from other countries are really improving and they're really stepping up right well I think that sort of does it for our Gold Cup preview uh, USA plays on Saturday July 8th at 4:30 in Nashville Tennessee uh, yes um, versus Panama will there be any catfish <laughs> That would be pretty funny if a catfish ended yeah, up yeah. on the field. We'll see. Go um, on to Nashville fans. But, uh, yeah, all the games are on Fox and their family of networks. Yes. Uh, probably most, mostly on Fox Sports 1. And uh, the final is all the way down the road, July 26th. Which uh, is a Wednesday. It is a Wednesday night. It will yeah. be 9 o'clock, and uh, I'll be in front of a TV watching, which is fine. That's a good day to have a final, I guess. Yeah. Kind of strange. I thought it, it is would be strange. A Saturday or Sunday final, but, but well, yeah. Uh, so we'll see how it goes. Do you have anything else you want to hit before we get out of here? Yes. Yeah. Uh, Lionel Messi, uh, Barcelona announced today that he has agreed to sign a new contract uh, for four years. It's actually a uh, three plus one, three years plus one option year. Not sure if it's club or mutual. Um, I don't see Barcelona wanting to allow Lionel Messi to leave right. before uh, 2021, which is what they're touting. Uh, the numbers are staggering. 575,000 <laughs> British pounds a week. Uh, the total is 132 million 
US dollars over four years. I did the math on the back of a napkin, $33 million per season, worth every penny. <laughs> Yeah, uh, I don't think they want to let him go no. before his his top of his game is done. Yeah, it was um, it was strange because I, I learned this a few weeks ago that all season long they've been talking about Messi's contract that would have been up in 2018. He was heading to the last year of his contract, and that's a year where a team like Manchester City or a right. team like Paris Saint Germain could theoretically bid for Lionel Messi, and that would be. It, impossible to see him playing for any European team other than Barcelona. I agree. Um, what they had to do was delay it to the, I guess everything was kind of worked out a month or two ago and they had to delay it until after the start of Barcelona's new fiscal year mm -hmm. uh, for accounting purposes. But, you know, what a past couple of weeks he's had. He just turned 30, just married his longtime girlfriend and now signs a $33 million a year contract. Not too bad. It's, you know, it's funny, there's two sides of Messi, it seems like. There's the Barcelona Messi, which is a steady ship of excellence. Sure. And then there's international Argentina Messi, which is also excellent, but just kind of like these major, major disappointments. The <laughs> with drama, and the federation is corrupt, and they just can't get it all straightened out. But, uh, yeah, so it's exciting to see him stay there. Hopefully, uh, Cristiano Ronaldo will commit to 100% staying with Real Madrid, and yeah. we can get a few more years of Ronaldo versus Messi in La Liga, which is kind of some of the best soccer you can ever see. Yeah, and we were not ready for that dynamic to change. Uh, nobody wants to yet. see that end. Yeah, yeah. Um, at least two more years. Right. Four more years. <laughs> All right, so I think that does it for us. Thanks for catching the podcast. You can catch us on Nesson.com slash podcast, YouTube.com slash Nesson. SoundCloud.com slash Nesson dash com and iTunes slash Nesson. I got them all. All right. There we go. What do we go? Yeah. Well, all right. Thanks for joining us and uh, we'll see you next week. Yeah.